It ends when Russia gets out of Ukraine. It's the same thing we said immediately on the 24th of February last year when we all woke up to an invasion by a country into another. We have seen actually an escalation over the past um, a few days also with, with Russia placing, um, uh, uh, planning to place um, a nuclear armament in Belarus. And that has meant that we as a European Union, slow to start, although we got our act together, but weapons took, took long to get there. Tanks have finally started to arrive. As you said, jets have started to be given. We can still go further because the escalation is one we have to respond to. Okay, but the Parliament, mm -hmm. being closer in a sense to the public, will start to feel that anxiety quicker than maybe the other institutions. And your MPs will start to say, hang on, where is this going? Do we want it to continue like this? Is it worth the price? I think, you know, the price for freedom can never be too high. And if you had asked me this one year ago, I would have thought that by today, that anxiety would have hit in quicker, but it hasn't. No matter how hard they have been bombed every day, the Ukrainian resilience and spirit has shown us that the freedoms that we've all taken for granted are worth fighting for. So when you have a Hungary which won't allow weapons through its borders, it won't support in the same way. Yes, I know it hasn't blocked the various sanctions, but it hasn't gone wholeheartedly. And it's delaying, of course, Sweden uh, to NATO. Um, can you, as president of the parliament, put pressure there? Yeah, I mean, I, I sit around the table of the European Council uh, and my position, I have been mandated for, with most clarity, that unity is essential. And of course, we can look and understand how difficult package by package of sanctions has been. But we've come so far that if we think of countries that were last year 100% reliant on Russian gas, and today we're in spring, doesn't look like this outside the windows, but we're at spring, we have survived the winter, our storages are still almost full, we have managed to uncouple ourselves, and I think that we will not fall back into where we were before, into being rely, re relying on a very intimidating big neighbour to our east. But escalation is the fear. And Ukraine, Russia says essentially it's NATO against Russia. And the truth is that NATO is fighting this war without fighting this war. I would say that Russia or Putin thought he could take Kiev at the time within five days. I think he underestimated, perhaps the world underestimated the resilience of Ukraine. We tend to forget, or sometimes we exclude it from our narrative, that this is about one country that has invaded another. Putin didn't stop in Oweit, he didn't stop in Crimea, he doesn't look like he's stopping now. What should our response be? Let Ukraine alone? or actually help logistically, militarily, financially, should it do more, I would be the first one to say, absolutely. Are our defense capabilities, should have they been, been better? Absolutely. Should we create a security and defense union? Absolutely, not in competition with NATO, in complementarity with NATO. But there are countries to our east who have been telling us for years, right. this is going to happen. Look at Moldova, look at what happened in Belarus, why are there no more sanctions to, on Belarusian regime? Why haven't we not helped Moldova more? We should have done that earlier. And I think that if we learn something, is that looking at the transatlantic alliance, never before, at least in my lifetime, more important than it is now.